Take your Bibles and turn uh, to Hebrews. We're going to look at Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, very familiar verse. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. I think most people are very familiar with this verse. Um, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now, if you were in the military, um, you marched. You were, you were in a, in the Air Force they call it a flight. Uh, you were in a group of people, say 50 to 100, and you marched for many, many miles. And you marched in combat boots. And it hurt. <laughs> and you had blisters. And you didn't complain about it. You just, you did it. But when that, if you've never marched before, I mean, it looks pretty easy. It looks like, you know, just all these people are moving. But do you realize how hard it is to move that many people that efficiently, they have to be doing the same thing in order for it to, to look like one, one uh, uh, person doing it, one group doing it. And if you're in the back, sometimes I was in the back, and so you're, <clears throat> you're marching and somebody gets out of step. Well, it, it's actually kind of funny because they start bouncing. Their head starts going up when everybody else is going down. And it'll actually make you seasick. It really will, it really will, because you keep watching it and watching it, and pretty soon, you start doing the same thing they're doing. And pretty soon, it starts spreading to the whole, the whole thing. And so to combat that, the, the, the TI, the training instructor, he will, uh, yell cadence. He will, he, he will give you right, left, right, left. So that everybody's doing the same thing at the, sa at the proper time. Now, when we look at the church, the church is very much like an army. It's, it's very much um, uh, made of many but it, it moves as one. It does as one. And while there's, uh, you know, at graduation time, there would be many different flights uh, that would be, you know, going before the, the commander, and uh, they would each be marching to their own cadence. Not everybody's marching to the same. So it's, it's like, um, it's, it, it, and, it, and that, that's sort of like the way the church is because you'll have an individual local church and it will have its cadence, but there'll be another individual local church and it will have its cadence, but all of them are moving in the same direction because it's the same Lord Jesus Christ. It's the same scriptures, it's the same word, but we're moving to a different cadence because we're all different and we all have different needs and different, different types of, 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 of things. Now, um, it, it's sort of like, I don't know if you remember, uh, one of my favorite toys was Etch-A-Sketch. You remember those? Ohio art, yeah. Um, it had two knobs. It had a vertical and a horizontal and you could kind of, kind of, you know, make a circle sort of. Um, you know, a television set does the same sort of thing. It's got the, the, the old analog. And they had two oscillators in it to produce a, a, a signal to, to, to move the, the, uh, the picture. And, uh, and this oscillator, it, it, it just, it kind of sits by itself and it does its own thing. And you got another one that does its own thing. Well, you might remember in the old television sets, they had something called a vertical hold and a horizontal hold. And if you turn the vertical hold, it started, you know, rolling so you couldn't see the picture anymore. 
That's because that oscillator was doing its own thing. It was doing whatever it wanted to do. Same thing with horizontal, it just, you know, it just gets all, there's no picture there. It's, it's, it's not discernible. So here's what they do to, to, to combat that. The television station sends out two signals. It sends out, a, it's called a sync pulse, and it sends out a vertical sync pulse, and it sends out a horizontal sync pulse, and, it, and what it says to that oscillator is, start now. And, and this is how the picture is, is made when it looks at what the, the television signal is sending, so that, so that every, every receiver that is, is tuned to that, to that channel is doing the same thing. If it's not, what you get is just an absolute mess. You get a picture that doesn't make any sense. And, and that's kind of the way, because we have, we have a master and we represent that master. We are ambassadors of Christ. And so we present a picture to this wicked world out there. This world is way worse than you think. It, it's, uh, we're all great actors. You know, we all deserve Academy Awards for our lying and our, our acting. We smile and, oh, everything's fine. But that's the way they are too. They, they, are, they are all um, pretending like there's nothing wrong. And, and in fact, they've, they've convinced themselves that nothing's wrong. So um, uh, let, me, let, me, let me back up from this verse. Uh, verse 25. Let me start with verse 23. And, and remember, this is the, the, the title of the book is Hebrews. This is Jewish. Remember that um, in Jesus' day, when, all, you know, really all through the, the Gospels, you're still in the Old Testament. You, you haven't come into the church age yet. This is, this is still Old Testament. This is still the, the sacrifices. This is still the, uh, the, the temple and all that. Okay, and, and that's what is still, uh, well, this, this is during the, the a, a, as the church age has just come in, that's when this is written. So it's between the time of the crucifixion and the time of the destruction of the, of the temple. So there's a change in, in, in philosophy because the, the Jews have this, we have to go to the temple to sacrifice and, and that's, that's, how we, that's how we please God. And it's changing from, no, it's, it's the heart. It's, 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 it's uh, 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 this is what pleases God, a, a heart f for him. So in, in verse 23, let us hold fast to the profession of our hope without wavering, for he is faithful that promised, and, and verse 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, and then not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much the more as we see the day approaching. Now let's go back to 23. The profession of our hope. Um, hope is not, well, I hope to win the lottery, or I hope that, you know, the sky doesn't fall. That, that, that's, that, that's not a hope that's not based on anything. This hope is, I know this is going to happen, but I haven't seen it yet. And it's very close to faith. And in fact, uh, turn to James chapter 1, speaking of, of that. Hold your place there. James chapter 1 and verse 6. This is another familiar verse. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven by the wind and tossed. So what he's told us in Hebrews holds fast the profession of our hope without wavering. Can I give you a, an example of wavering? Um, how about Peter after the Lord Jesus is arrested and he's following him around He's, he's not totally 
you know, running away or anything, but he's certainly, he's certainly not, let's say, um, a, a great example of, of what a disciple is. So he's warming himself by the fire, and here comes a servant girl that says, um, I think you're one of them. And he said, no, 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 not me, not me. No, no, you talk like him. No, 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 and blankety blank, blank, blank. Okay, that's, that's wavering. That's wavering. And I think the church today has done a lot of that, and that's done a lot of damage to the picture that that world sees of, of who Jesus Christ is and, and, and what, um, what he stands for. And uh, so um, one of the things we've, we've, we have sodomite churches, uh, we have churches that are, by the way, have you noticed that pedophiles are, are now celebrated? Uh, more and more, this, this, is, this is coming in. In fact, they have, a, uh, they have a new name. They don't like that name because it's, it's too, um, I don't know, carries too much baggage, I guess. They call them MAPs. They call them MAPs. Minor Attracted Persons. That's disgusting. So all your parents, you, you better watch your children. You better watch your children because you, do you remember that, that uh, the sodomite uh, video they made with all, you know, like the Brady Bunch pictures, you know, all the, all the squares of them. And they were all singing about we're coming to get your children. Yeah, they are. They are. Um, but um, anyway, so that's wavering. And, and so what, what, what he's telling us here, the writer of Hebrews, he's telling us that we are to hold fast. Um, in my neighborhood, there's a lot of trees. They're old trees, and the roots go really deep. And they've gone through, I don't know how many hurricanes, but they're still there. And sometimes you get some of these little, little you know, just planted trees, and a little breeze comes along, and they, they fall over. We are not to be that. And, and that's where, you know, new believers, it is so easy for them to get run over. It is just, it's, it's so easy. And so that's something that, again, all right, we're going to look in, in verse 24. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. So it's now one another. This, this is, you cannot, I'll go back to the, to the, to the, uh, to the marching um, picture, you cannot march by yourself. You need, that's not marching, that's walking or, 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 or something. You cannot do it by yourself. The Christian life is not a do-it-yourself kind of, of affair. If, if, if you say, well, I didn't buy into that. I, I want to do things my way. Well, um, that's, that's not the way it is. It's one another. And we, when we say provoke, we usually think of provoking as like an animal, you know, teasing an animal, you know, here's, here's a piece of meat and then pull it away. And, and what happens? They get angry. They are provoked into anger. And that's what we think of. We think uh, rage and rioting, uh, provoking rioting. Uh, and we've seen a lot of that. Uh, uh, enragement, uh, aggression, uh, just infuriating. Uh, we've seen a lot of racism, prejudice, that that kind of that kind of thing. That's that's not what we're talking about. We're, we're talking about provoking. We're provoking to love and 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 to good works, and and that's that's really uh, I, I guess sort of like uh, peer pressure. Yeah, have you ever, ever watched high schools? You guys have. <laughs> when you start getting peer pressure, they all have the same tennis shoes and, or they all have, or wear the same kind of clothes or, or whatever. It's because their friends are doing it. 
And, and that's, that's really what the church is. We provoke one another, and you can't do it when you're sitting at home. So uh, th this is just, um, just how important, and he's emphasizing how important this is, that you cannot live the Christian life apart from the one another. And the church gathering, as, as we said, the assembling of ourselves together, um, it, what, what it acts at, it, it, it's sort of like uh, the army or, or, the, or the, the flight that's marching. The cadence is what brings you back into where you should be. Because let me tell you something, this, this world will, will draw you away. It is sandpaper, it is, it, it will, it, you, you don't think, you don't think it's affecting you, but it is. And what this does is, is when we're around like believers, what it does is it, it's the cadence that brings us back to where we should be. And you say, well, I don't, I don't think that happens. Well, um, well, you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> because that's what it does. If you don't, if you don't, let me tell you something, you start, you start, you start oscillating on your own. You start doing your own thoughts, your own, um, and, and, you, and you get further and further away from what the Lord Jesus Christ has, has told us to do. I have, a, I will tell you, there are weeks where my Bible is not even open during the week. I, I've, I've done that. But then when I come back to church and I see that everybody else has, and, and here they've memorized a verse and I haven't, it's, it's, not, it's not the shame factor, but it's, it's the, I need to get back to where I was. And that's, and that's what it does. And, 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 and it's not something that you actively um, talk about or, or you know, uh, uh, preach about or, or anything. It's, it's something that happens. And, you know, the more, the more you get that, that, that cadence, um, the more times you can meet together, the better the more fidelity you have and the less chance you have of going off on your own or getting out of step. Um, and and, and that, that becomes disastrous because what happens is not only do you start bouncing and, and then everybody else starts bouncing, but in, in, in the worst case, you can actually trip and fall and you get trampled on. I mean, that, it, you know, it sounds funny, but it's, it's actually true. It's actually true, you can't stop. So uh, it's dangerous not to, and, and so um, uh, that's, that's uh, what we do. Is, and and the, in, in verse 25, we talk about exhorting one another. Exhortation is, is, is not a uh, mandate. It, 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 we're not mandating, you have to do this, you have to do that. But there is an urging, there is a, Okay, if, if you're not here, uh, maybe we'll call you. Maybe, what's going on? Because uh, there is an exhortation, there is an urging, there is a, you know, we're taking an interest. And so, um, I guess it, it, it One, th one thing I have, I have noticed is that as, as our world is falling apart and more and more and more, you start seeing the separation of the genuine from, from the false. And um, the, 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 the people that were kind of on the fringes have tended to fall off. And, and, and that is what he says so much the more as you see the day approaching. So much the more. In other words, this, is, this becomes more and more and more important because the danger is going to become greater and greater and greater. Um, so let's, let's, let's turn to... Um, 
Let's turn to Matthew 24. Matthew 24 is sort of uh, end of the age, as you see the day approaching. And there's a, I don't want to get too much into this. There, there are some differing opinions of, of what day of the Lord means and, and what the day means. Um, I, I will tell you what I think it means. And, and I, I, would, I would say, and I've got verses, Isaiah um, Isaiah 13, 6 says, Howl for the day of the Lord is at hand. It's not a good thing. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, uh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger. That sounds like the tribulation to me. So um, I, I consider the day of the Lord to be to start at the rapture and through the tribulation. I, I also have, I, I'm, I'm not totally settled on this, but uh, there, are, there are people that believe it's also the millennium period. That is also the day of the Lord. And I'm leaning toward that, but um, you know, I wouldn't want to argue that right now. Um, all right, so Matthew 24. Let me, let, me, let me set this one up. This is, I, I, I love... I love this section. I just, chapter 23 and 24 are just the best. But let me, let's go back to 21, and we'll just I'm not go through each verse, but just kind of what's leading up to, to chapter 24. In, in, in chapter 21, we're looking at the triumphal entry. You remember that? That was when he's riding on the donkey, and he has the, the multitude. They spread out their garments, and they, they say, Hosanna, and... and uh, and uh, blessed is he that comes, and and uh, and and they're just oh yay yay, um, and so they they uh, he's going into now Jerusalem has walls around it, and they were wise enough to build their wall around it. And we weren't, but that's that's another story. Um, and, and, and if you go, they have gates. There, there are gates around. And that's the only way you can get in. You have to go through the gates. And the gates are absolutely, I mean, you, you stand and look at the doors. They're just huge. Um, and, and, you know, that, that, that is kind of an engineering feat. Um, but they, they open these doors, and, and that's the only way you get in. That's the only way you get into the city. Well, within the city is this complex, this, the temple complex, there's a bunch of buildings and stuff around, there's this big square and, and all that. And I guess it would maybe sort of like DC, you know, you, you've got this building, you've got the Capitol building, you've got the White House, you've got this, you've got that. And, and so he, he, he goes to the temple and and, and, and that's where he starts overthrowing, turning the tables over. You know, he, he starts cleaning house. <laughs> I, 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 I love this because he says in verse 13, this is my house, shall be, call, shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of thieves. Oh, I love that. Because, you know, stuff like Roman Catholicism and, and liberal Protestantism, they have made the Lord Jesus Christ to look like some feminized soy boy. So he's, 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 uh, he's codependent with his mother. He has to ask his mother because he doesn't really know anything and she's wiser than he is and she's sinless too. So, um, and, they, and they push this idea that Jesus is just some kind of love, love, love and Never, never, oh, never does anything. He's just, he's just, just don't rock the boat. <laughs> well, he's rocking this boat. And, uh, and, and in 15, verse 15, the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things he did. Okay, he's healing the blind, he's healing the lame, he's doing all these wonderful things. You know, if, if somebody came in here and, and, and you know, they, they, they come in lame or blind and they leave, being able to see and being able to walk, no cancer, no, 
no, whatever. Man, wouldn't we, wouldn't we be rejoicing? Wouldn't we be saying, ah, that's great. This is wonderful. Not, well, not these clowns. Not these chief priests and scribes. Look at, look at what it says. The, the children, the children in the temple were, were saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Now, here's the reason why. Here's the reason why, the, the, the real reason why, is because he was a threat to their power and to their money and to their, their uh, way of living. And this whole chapter right here is Jesus just poking them in the eye. Oh man, it, it, it is so much fun. Uh, to watch this, and I, you know, I mean, we can see it. We, uh, are, are, are they not the Democrats? Just the, the same thing? They want power, and anything that 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 threatens their power, they're they're you know, low taxes, oh, low prices, oh, everybody's employed, and they hate it. They want us to be suffering. All right, so. This, this is where the scribes and, and, and the Pharisees and the priests, that's, that's who they are. And we're living it. We really are living it. And look at what it says. They were sore displeased. Oh, we don't like this. So, so he, he, he leaves there and he, and he goes, goes to uh, Bethany. Bethany is just east of Jerusalem. So he's coming out of the, out of the temple um, speaks to the fig tree, but the next morning he comes back to the temple and, uh, uh, and he, he meets the, the chief priests and the, and the, and the, uh, and the, and the, and the elders and, and all that. And, uh, you said my temple. And, and then in verse 23, they said, by what authority? Who gave? Who? Who do you think you are? We are the ones who own this. We are the ones that everybody should be coming to. Who do you think you are? And then, and then Jesus, man, he turns the tables on. He just he asks them something they ought to know, and he's basically saying, by what authority do you ask me what my authority is? Because you don't even know. You don't even know anything. Uh, he asked them about the baptism of John. And, and then in verse 27, uh, they, they, they say to Jesus, well, we can't tell you. We don't know. And so, if, well, if you don't know, well, then what, why do you have the authority to even, even question my authority? So he, so he pokes him in the eye there. And then he tells, he tells a bunch of parables, and, uh, <laughs> and in verse 45 of, of, of chapter 21, the chief priests and the Pharisees heard the parables, and they perceived <laughs> that he spake of them. <laughs> they understood that he was slapping them in the face. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and so much so that they wanted to lay hands on him, arrest him, but they feared the multitude. Now, same with, uh, same, we're seeing the same thing today. You know, they, they, they'll, they'll say a bunch of stuff, but when everybody is, is against them and they're, oh, uh, they'll back down, they'll back down. But they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Well, they didn't know who he was, but he still had the popularity, and so they they had to they had to to be careful about what they did. So he tells them some more some more uh, parables, uh, and then in fifteen of twenty two, verse fifteen of twenty two, the Pharisees they took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. Okay, how are we gonna how are we gonna do this? Now the thing is, and and, and the lesson we can take here is if we're standing in the truth. We can stand without wavering. These people, the devil and, and, and all, his, all his disciples, they can't stand. They, they will huff and puff, but they can't blow the house down. 
It's because we're standing in the truth. And, that, and, and really, we need to uh, just, just watching how Jesus masterfully does this is, is just, uh, it, it's just, it's just a lot of fun. So, uh, so they continue, and uh, the Pharisees fail. And then uh, in verse 23, the Sadducees say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get him. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out how to, how to do this. And they're all colluding together, by the way. Talk about collusion. And, and uh, so they, they ask him some questions. They say, oh, master, oh, good teacher, oh, you know, oh, we're, we're so good. But they're not. And then in, in verse 33, they were astonished at his doctrine. But when the Pharisees had heard that they had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered. So the Sadducees fail. So the Pharisees come back and they say, okay, we'll try now. We'll, we'll keep throwing stuff at him until something sticks. And they keep throwing stuff at him and nothing ever sticks. <laughs> um, so, so uh, uh, let's, let's see, uh, verse 46. Uh, no man was able to answer him a word, neither does any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. He shut them all up. He shut them all up. They, could, they, they were afraid to go talk to him. They, they were, oh, we'll, we'll walk on the other side of the street. We don't, we don't want to have anything to do with it. Why? Because he stood for the truth. And that, you know, when, when we realize that we're on the winning side, you know, winning. <laughs> Trump said, you know, you're going to get tired of winning. And no, no, we, we want to win some more. <laughs> and that's, that is what the, uh, the, the, the Christian life is. It's winning, 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 winning. And you think, well, oh, they're, they're not winning right now. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. These guys did not win when Jesus went to the cross. He laid his life down. They didn't win. They, didn't, they did not do it. He did it out of his own uh, will. But, uh, all right. So, here we get to uh, cha uh, chapter 23. And this one I just love because they have now been, up until this point, it's been a dialogue. We've been, you know, and, and they failed. They failed, they failed, they failed. Okay. So now it's time for a monologue from the Lord Jesus. So he starts out and, and, and all right, here's, a, here's the crowd. Here's the disciples. And then here, here is also the, uh, the scribes, the Pharisees, all of the leadership. They're, they're all there listening to this. And so here's what he says in verse 5. But all their works, speaking of the scribes and the Pharisees, all their works they do for, to be seen of men, for they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost uh, rooms at feasts and the chief seats of the synagogues. They love to be honored. They want power. That, that's, that's what they want. And Jesus is absolutely blasting them. Absolutely blasting them. He, he says in verse 7, greetings in the mark is to be called rabbi, rabbi. They want to be higher than you are. Uh, we, could, we could say um, in, in modern day, uh, something like the Pope, who wears all this junk and oh oh stop the traffic oh he's he's so much more he's so much better that's the kind of thing but what does jesus say to him verse 13 woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites <laughs> and then in verse 14 he says it again woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites um and then he does it in verse 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Ooh, man. I mean, he's just poking them in the eye. And they can't say anything. They have, they have nothing to say because I think they know it's true. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think they can think of a lie 
to come to come back. So then in 16, he 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 doesn't stop. Woe unto you. You know, we think, you know, oh, woe is me. I got a C on a on a test. No, no, no. But when 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 the God of the universe pronounces a woe on you, that's not light. That's that's you better pay attention. You, I mean, there's no hope. There's 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 nothing you can do. So woe unto you, you blind guides. And, and, and the, all right, the, 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 the masses are hearing this. The people who go to the temple, they're all hearing this. Okay, they, so they're, 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 uh, they're, they're being run by a bunch of idiots. <laughs> they're fools. Um, verse 23, he doesn't stop. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Um, 25, woe unto you, scribes and hypocrites. Uh, 27, woe unto you, scribes and, hip uh, and Pharisees, hypocrites. 29, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Do they have, is, is he, has he made his point? Has, has he, you know, God only has to say something once, but if he says it, what, how many times is this? Uh, mm, is he trying to say something? And then, and then in verse 33, he says, Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? This, this idea that the Lord Jesus is a um, harmless, uh, loving, um, couldn't hurt anybody, um, that, that's... That, that's simply not true. That's, 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 been, that's a lie that's been promulgated that he is, he is a man's man. And, and uh, Hollywood has, has given us this image of what men should be. You know, the John Waynes and the whoever the person is now, I don't know. But this is what a man should be. And I, I've heard I've heard uh, Catholic women say, um, "Well, I pray to Mary because Jesus doesn't understand me. He's a man. Well, he created you. Um, I think he knows you better than you know you. So, uh, you know this this idea of 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 putting." A woman, anybody, even it, Jesus, well, Mary, putting her equal uh, to Jesus as as she can she can manipulate him and and, and tell him what to do. In it. Okay, that is a big lie. All right, so now we get to chapter twenty-four. I'm only going to do the first three verses here. I, I I wanted to set this up because this is so good. So you, you, you've seen the dialogue between them, and he's just, nothing sticks to him. And here he has just absolutely blasted them into oblivion. They just eviscerated them. There's, there's, he, he says nothing good about them. Uh, and, in, and in chapter 24, in verse 1, Jesus went out. So he goes out of the temple, departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Now, in, in, in verse 3, he's on the Mount of Olives. And I, even though it doesn't say that in, in verse 1, I think that's where they were. I, I think because Jesus was just in the temple, he didn't need a tour of, of the temple. He, he already knows what it is. But they're going to show him the buildings of the temple. I think they were... The, the, the Mount of Olives is outside of, of the city, and so you can see it's it's because it's high. You can you can see the, the you know from a from a, a view, and so I think what has I think what has happened. This is this is just just me. That the disciples had their mouth open; uh, they could not believe that he destroyed these people like that, and. And I think that on their walk up to the Mount of Olives, nobody said anything. 
Nobody said a thing. What, what are you going to say, you know? And they didn't, they didn't, I, I, really, I don't think they knew at that point who he is. Um, I, I, I don't, because they're, they're, what they're showing him is the buildings that we are building for you. Man is doing this for God. And they're still in that mindset of, of we're working for you. Well, we're doing this for you and the building, that's, that's what it's all about. They don't, they don't really get the concept that the heart is what God wants. So, uh, so they, they're, they're showing him the buildings and then, and then Jesus turns their guns, his guns toward them and says, hey, one stone's going to be, it, it's all going to be blown up. It's gone. And that, that, they were all, they were all puffed up about, look what we're doing for you. And he just puts a pin in it and they deflate. And, and, and I think what, what he's doing here is showing them the transition from the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the temple system into the church system. And, and I don't think they understand it yet. But then he talks about uh, uh, the, uh, the sign of the coming and, and, and the, the end of the world and, and, and that kind of thing. And so he, he explains that. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll do a, a, another a sermon on, on that because there's a lot of juicy stuff in there. A lot, a lot of really, really good stuff. Um, I think that's all I have for this. I, I did want to make a mention in, in case you, you didn't see it. Um, because it just, it, it, it just, it hit me um, uh, that we still have a remnant of of Christianity and what it used to be, because in the courtroom they used to they used to quote scripture, King James. They that's that's the way it used to be. In fact, any witness that was going to take the stand had to swear on it was King James um, on a King James Bible because that's that was the standard of truth. In the uh, in the Rittenhouse case. The judge said, he, t he, t he turned to, the, to, uh, to uh, Rittenhouse and said, defendant will rise and face the jury and will hearken to their verdict. Now, who uses that word hearken? New King James doesn't. There is zero times. The New International doesn't. Zero times. No, that's the King James version. And, you know... We have a heritage in this country, uh, and it's worth saving. It really is worth saving. And, and when, when we proclaim specifically uh, God's word, it's, and, 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 and as, as, as uh, translated into English, um, the King James, um, we push against this, and, and when, when we don't, we waver and, and you see what a mess these, these other versions have, have caused. So that's, uh, that's what I had for today. And, uh